researchers at IIT Madras have developed an artificial intelligence tool called PWOD for personalized cancer diagnosis. The tool helps identify cancer causing genes and aids in better recovery for patients besides reducing side effects. As per World Health Organization, cancer is the second leading cause of death globally that accounted for nearly one in six deaths in 2020. Cancer is an uncontrolled growth of cells that can occur due to mutations in ochno genes or tumor suppressor genes or both. However, not all mutations necessarily result in cancer. Therefore, it is important to identify genes that are causing cancer to devise appropriate personalized cancer treatment strategies. In an exclusive conversation with PBNS, Dr. Karthik Raman, a core member of the Robert Bosch Center for Data Sciences and Artificial Intelligence at IIT Madras, explains to us what exactly is PWOT. So I think uh, one very important aspect of uh, you know, the, the fight against cancer is to try and understand the disease a lot better. And uh, I think with uh, a lot of accumulating genomic data, see cancer is basically a disease of the genome. Right? So there are so many uh, mutations that keep happening day in and day out. We accumulate mutations all the time. Right? Most of them are harmless. Most of them don't uh, have any uh, noticeable effect in our lives. But one rare unfortunate mutation can actually trigger cancer and you know, um, uh, you know, push us on that slope. So uh, what we do here in this uh, tool is, is trying to use uh, the available wealth of genomic sequences to try and identify, uh, understand right, what, what are the mutations that are triggering off this disease. Right? And so this is basically the notion of what um, uh, we call these uh, pathogenic mutations, but in uh, uh, can also be called as driver versus passenger mutations, right? So driver mutations, as the name sounds, are those that drive cancer, the progression of cancer. They give cancer cells an undue advantage over the other cells. Whereas passenger mutations are, uh, we still don't know. We assume that they do not uh, have any significant impact on the progression of cancer. So what has happened so far, right? In the last, I think, uh, a decade or so. People have tried to come up with various methods to predict which of these mutations are important for the progression of cancer and so on. But what we have done now is to take this a step further and uh, look at every single patient, right? So this is why we call it personalized. So in the context of a given, a, a given mutation in a given patient might have a different role. A given gene in a, diff in a given patient may have a different role in the progression of disease compared to others. Maybe I'll have Malvika add to this. Ms. Malvika Sudhakar, a research scholar at IIT Madras and the chief architect of this study explains how PIVOT is based on a model that utilizes information on mutations. Currently, methods which identify driver genes have been based on a cohort. So they're looking at pan cancer or like in a particular cancer type. So with Pivot, what we wanted to do was we wanted to look at the mutations which occur in a personalized manner. And as Sir mentioned that they are driver mutations and driver genes. So, you know, when there are mutations in these driver genes, it progresses cancer. So we looked at not only whether these genes are driver genes, but we went on to further label them as the two categories of driver genes, that is uh, tumor suppressor genes and oncogenes. So with Pivot, what we are able to do is we the, uh, the model learns on data of known uh, driver genes of patients and then predicts it for any unknown patient that you uh, throw at it. Ms. Malvika further explains the significance to identify personalized cancer genes. Each one of us, every cell in our body uh, consists of DNA and DNA contains these genes. These are the hereditary material which is passed on from generation to generation. Now, some of these genes help in the proper functioning of the cell, right? And I mentioned that there are two categories. So we have uh, genes which are tumor suppressor genes. That means normally when they function as they should, they suppress tumors. They do not allow the normal cell to progress into a cancer cell. And then there are other genes which are called as oncogenes, which actually help in the progression of cancer. So when they function normally, uh, they are called as proto-oncogenes and the cell performs as it should. But when they uh, get activated, what happens is the normal cell turns into a cancer cell. So what happens is if there are alterations in these genes, which are TSGs or OGs, that is tumor suppressor genes or oncogenes, in that case, 
what uh, the cell starts slowly moving from a normal cell into a cancer cell. Now it is very important for us to know which of these genes has been mutated or altered so that we can uh, we can suggest uh, as to what the progression of cancer has been and hence uh, such as treatment for uh, these patients. Pivot is an artificial intelligence tool that will collect and study data to identify personalized cancer genes. This would amass a large number of individual data, Dr. Karthik explains, if that could be a potential challenge. He says there's an increasing need to focus on the Indian specific data. In fact, I think that's the beauty of AI, right? So we want more data. We want more data to build more accurate models, right? We want to identify what is, because uh, I think uh, the one word that I always associate with cancer is heterogeneity. There's just so much of heterogeneity in, in, in cancers in the sense that uh, there is so much uh, different between two persons having uh, uh, the same cancer even and so on, right? So there are like different mutations, different uh, genes that are responsible, the pathways uh, which these genes participate in are completely different. So this makes it very difficult for us to, uh, and this is sort of the reason why uh, a generic treatment is not often very successful. So you need to tailor a treatment towards an individual. I mean, it's easier said than done, but I think the goal is to understand what is the difference in person A's cancer versus person B's cancer. And I think tools such as this, which, which rely on uh, not just genomic, I think I've been mentioning genomic a lot, but if you look at the title of our paper, it starts with multiomic data. So we, not just, uh, we don't just look at the genomic data, we also look at the, what is known as the transcriptomic data, which is RNA. And a lot of other expression data and uh, uh, copy number variations and uh, whatever additional data that we can actually get on these uh, data sets. And um, uh, one thing to add here is that we need to also focus on a lot of India specific data. So currently this is not very India specific. We just pulled data from the standard databases that uh, people have generated across the world, which are sort of the gold standard in the field. But I think for Tailoring these diagnoses, these analyses to the Indian population, I think we need to really look at India-specific data, and that is something that we really want to do in the in the in the future. The research area of precision medicine is still at a nascent stage. Pivot helps push these boundaries and present prospects for experimental research based on the genes identified. The team plans to reach out to research hospitals for genomic data and further the scope of their study. So see, this is, this is still in, in a sort of early stage in the sense that this is going to uh, help build the understanding of the cancer, right? So so I think we, we would love to get in touch with research hospitals who have this aptitude for uh, research, right? So and if they can actually get consent from the patients for sharing their genomic data and so on. Of course, it is all always anonymized and completely, uh, you know, unidentifiable. And this kind of data, when it starts coming in, uh, uh, I think we can really uh, start making an impact. We can really try to understand what is different about like Indian specific cancers. Right? There is a lot of prevalence of uh, oral head and neck cancers in India. Can we understand them a lot better, right? Or even breast cancer and so on. So this is something that, um, yeah, we, we would like to, uh, you know, it's, it's not, I'm trying to make a small distinction here, not collaborate with the clinic, but with like research hospitals, right? So this is still in a research phase. And I think, but this has a lot of promise for having an impact down the line. Ms. Malvika tells us how they have built AI prediction model for three different types of cancer and how they are planning to extend it further to many more cancer types. We have yes. looked at three cancer types right now. So we have looked at breast cancer, we have looked at colon cancer and lung, can lung adenocarcinomas. So uh, we would definitely want to expand this work to, you know, all the different cancer types which are, uh, which we have data available on. Ms. Malvika and Dr. Karthik tell us the journey behind the development of this tool and the expert team who helped in its creation. So this has uh, been sort of the final study in Malvika's PhD thesis. So she's been doing her PhD since uh, 2015 on, and she's uh, carried out a lot of interesting studies in this uh, space of cancer genomics. She already has another uh, paper, couple of papers published in the area of uh, uh, cancer genomics. And I must say that this study is something that Malvika led entirely on her own. 
right? So she's been like the chief architect of the study in terms of designing the experiments. Obviously, I must also mention Professor Raghunathan Rangaswamy, who is uh, our uh, Malvika's co-advisor and a very important collaborator on this project. So he is a data science expert. So Raghu and I, we uh, we give her uh, you know mentorship on the data science and so on. But I think Malvika has uh, taken a lot of initiative and. Um, you know, a very novel uh, design of the study and so on. I'm going to let Malvika add to it, but I'm now... <laughs> it's making me feel very embarrassed. Actually, I would say that I have come to this point only because of my two supervisors, because they have given me the freedom and they have pushed me into directions and made me think for myself. And that's the only reason why we are here. And obviously all my lab mates who with whom I had discussions over the years, because, you know, no, no work is an individual effort. So you have being part of groups like IBSC, RBCD, SI, we have group meetings and you have discussions in these meetings. And I think all those little conversations also brings us to this point. It's not like an individual effort at all. You know, they might be just some co-authors on the paper, but I would, you know, give credit to all my lab mates. I must add to this thing about uh, teamwork and the collaboration. Right? So we have very vibrant environment at IIT Madras uh, in uh, at our centers, right? So we have the Center for Robert Bo uh, the Robert Bo Center for Data Science and AI, and the Center for Integrative Biology and Systems Medicine. We have quite a lot of students who work on related problems, and there is a lot of interaction between them. And uh, <clears throat> the main idea, in fact, behind setting up this uh, Center for Integrative Biology and Systems Medicine was. Uh, we have a lot of experts in data science and quantitative uh, sciences in IIT Madras, right? So to get them to work on a ton of publicly available data sets. So this was uh, Professor Ashok Venkatraman's uh, brainchild, in fact. So he's the one who sort of set up the center in the uh, first place. He's, uh, he holds a chair professorship at our department and he heads the Cancer Science uh, Institute at, in Singapore currently. And uh, I think, you know, to to sort of have access to these kinds of international experts and build these collaborations over a period of time and you know point us in the direction of very exciting problems i think uh, that's been uh, fantastic at these uh, centers thank you for watching stay tuned with pbns for more updates on innovation and developments in the healthcare sector